How are we feeling this morning? Give yourselves a round of applause. You made it down. Come on, yes. Go for it. As a crowd, you are a very, very durable crowd. You're very rough. You're like, you're like, as a crowd, you're like Leo DiCaprio, uh, um, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio in The Revenant. That's what you guys are this morning. Like, bus, get to the show. Who came from a 905 area code this morning? Make some noise. Come on, where's your, 90, come on, give yourselves a round of applause, 905ers. Yeah. Who, anyone from 519 this morning? 519, oh, wow. Look at you. How about 705? Any 705ers? Do we have any, 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 any buttling, dong, any, anyone else? Uh, I'm kidding, I'm joking. They hunt. Have a good night. No. Um, we're the 416ers. 416ers, are you? And, uh, yeah, not so impressive. Not so impressive. People are like, like, look at the line at Starbucks. This is crazy. Oh my gosh. How am I going to make it through my day? Um, no, welcome all. I'm a 416er. I can make fun of you. Welcome, and uh, uh, my name is James Cunningham. Such an honor and pleasure to be your first half of your, uh, of your MC. My good friend and I, Jessica Holmes, we're co-hosting, so I'm kicking off the day, and we have got a fantastic day for you. Now, I should tell you a little bit about myself before we start the day. My name is James Cunningham, and uh, I, am, uh, I host a show on the Food Network called Eat Street. Do you guys watch my show? I'm the food truck show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, three of you. Um, it's... Uh, no, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Canadian superstar. Um, um, no, I, it's, a, it's a weird thing because our show is it's, it's a Canadian show. We're very proud of it. 40 countries around the world. Um, but it's a very strange thing being on the Food Network because you either know the Food Network and watch the or you don't watch the Food Network. So it's either people really know who you are or don't know who you are. Recently, I was in Los Angeles, California, and I was emceeing a show. And the keynote speaker was, uh, was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, if you ever get the chance to see Arnold Schwarzenegger deliver a keynote speech, oh my gosh, don't. It is um, it's, <laughs> la, 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 very hard to... La, 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 very, very... Um, no, very, no, great, we don't, we don't rep him, um, but um, uh, if, he's a great speaker and a really nice guy, but it was very funny meeting him because he was late coming in, so Los Angeles traffic, so I was had, off the top of my MC, I had to kill time, so he was 20 minutes late, he's coming in behind the curtains here, and he's behind the curtains getting mic'd up, and I'm doing my jokes, and I, all I can hear is, <laughs> which means he was either laughing or eating a steak, I have no idea, I have no idea. Who can tell? But afterwards, he came up to me, and this is exactly what it's like being a Canadian uh, TV star. He comes up to me, he goes, he goes, I want to thank you very much for, for killing the time. He goes, you're very good at what you do. You're a very funny guy. Don't take this the wrong way. Who the hell are you? <laughs> I just, no, I was, you cannot throw a stone without hitting a millennial. Well, you, you just don't throw a stone at a millennial, because then they'll call the parents. The parents will go, why'd you throw a stone at my parents? Anyway, um, no, millennials are wonderful. Uh, I love, I have, a, I have some millennial jokes, actually. Uh, um, this is, I wrote a joke. Why was the millennials fish tank so dirty? Because there was hashtag no filter. Boom, millennial joke, what? That's a joke about, yeah. Why could the millennial not move out of his parents' basement? Because he never moved in the basement in the first place. His dad bought him a condo. Millennial joke, what? Boom, I'm kidding. Millennials don't hack my bank accounts. I'm kidding, I'm just joking. Please don't. They are, they are on there. Smartphone, who has an iPhone make some noise? iPhones in the house, we've got some iPhones, yeah. Who is a Samsung? Samsung in the house? Samsung's? We got, where are the Blackberries? Blackberries in the house? There's, oh wow! There's always, they're coming back! How about, flip, what's a flip phone? Flip phone people? Any flip phones in the house? Do we have a flip phone? There's always one Amish guy. There's always one guy who's just like, check on the barn, Jebediah, send. He's always got... No, I, mi I miss it. I used to have a flip phone. I had the Motorola Razor. That was my favorite phone. Because you could hang up that phone. You could be like, you're having a fight. That price sucks, flip. And they knew you hung up on them, you know? You can't do that with your eyes. That price sucks, scroll, scroll, Siri, thumbprint. And, ah. No drama in the iPhone. You can't. Where the married people make some noise. Married folks in the house, where are you? Married people out there? Less, wow, that's the most depressing clapping I've ever heard in my entire life. That is the, <laughs> you weren't even trying there. Just like, uh, uh. Live in the dream, buddy. Live in the dream. You have to have, I ask, because you have to have the same kind of cell phone technology as your, as your mate, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever. If you have an iPhone, they have to have an iPhone. You have a Blackberry, they have to have, you have to have the same kind, or it's not going to work. I'll tell you why. Because I used to have, when I had my Motorola Razor, I had a flip phone, I was dating a girl who had a Blackberry. So she had a keyboard, I had the flip, right? So when we got into a text fight, she could out-text me four to one. So she's like, you never listen, send, I'm moving out, send, I hate you, send, you're a jerk, send. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Where's the frickin' question mark? Send. 
In the time it took me to compose and send that text, she moved everything out of the house. That's how long it took.